This video has been produced by Crown Cork and Seal in conjunction with CMB Engineering Seaming Systems to promote customer training and the correct procedure for setup and evaluation of double seams for food cans. In this video, you will see the process of double seaming, how to evaluate seam quality, with an introduction to operating and critical parameters. In addition, we will discuss key steps required to target set a seamer and the operating and process limits necessary to ensure good double seam quality. As the can is fed into the seamer, it passes a sensor. This activates the no can, no end arrest finger, which allows an end to be fed by the magazine into the guides via a feed screw. The end is transferred by a turret onto the can at the makeup point. The first operation roll moves in and rolls the end curl under the can flange to form the first operation seam. Just after the peak of the first operation cam, the first operation roll moves away and the second operation roll moves in. The second operation roll moves in to compress and complete the seam, thus forming a hermetic seal. After the peak of the second operation cam, the second operation roll moves away, the lifter descends, the can exits the machine via the discharge turret. Seam evaluation should always be carried out on consecutive cans from numbered heads, each head being treated as an individual machine. Two categories of parameters characterize a double seam, the operating parameters and the critical parameters. The critical parameters are those that define the integrity of the double seam. The operating parameters are countersink, seam height, seam thickness, body hook, end hook and free space. Countersink, this is where the seaming chuck locates and supports the end. Seam height is the overall outside measurement of the seam. Seam thickness, nominal seam thickness is three end thicknesses added to two body thicknesses plus the free space which is the allowance for the compound. Body hook is formed from the flange of the can. End hook is produced from the curl of the end. Free space is calculated by deducting the five material thicknesses from the seam thickness. It is normally around 5.5 thousandths of an inch or 0.14 millimetres. Sometimes free space is included as a critical parameter. The operating parameters should be within the tolerances on the specification sheet to ensure all the critical parameters are acceptable. Critical parameters are tightness rating, actual overlap and body hook butting. Tightness rating refers to the amount of ironed out end hook below the worst wrinkle expressed as a percentage of the end hook length. Actual overlap is the amount the body hook overlaps the end hook. This dimension can be measured on sections or calculated on manual teardown. Body hook butting is the length of the body hook relative to the internal seam height. On teardown, it is calculated from seam and hook dimensions. It is expressed as a percentage to indicate the amount by which the body hook is embedded into the lining compound. Body hook butting indicates the quality at the primary seal area. Actual overlap and tightness rating indicate the quality at the secondary sealing area. For the finished seam, consecutive head numbered cans are collected. Care must be taken to ensure can and head numbers correspond. Often this can be done automatically. Mark a minimum of two positions on the seam, ensuring subsequent checks will be taken at these points. For two-piece cans, these two points are at any position around the can, but diametrically opposed on the seam. For three-piece cans, the seam should be marked at the 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock positions, calling the can side seam the 12 o'clock position.
Thank you.